The CNL adjustable pan hard bar would be an excellent choice for the 05 to 14 S197 owners out there looking to center their rear axle but on a budget. Now the CNL will offer on-car adjustability along with the tubular steel construction, unique blue powder coat, and loaded with greasable polyurethane bushings offer right around 150 bucks. Now two bolt install here guys, not a difficult job at all, but since it is done underneath the car, the site's going to kick things up to a soft two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, take a couple of hours or so to complete from start to finish, as we'll show you later in the video. So why do you need an adjustable pan hard bar in the first place? Well, listen guys, if you've lowered your Mustang an inch or more then chances are your factory fixed length pan hard bar has either pushed or shifted your rear axle further to the driver's side, which listen, obviously it's not ideal, right? It's gonna throw off your thrust angle and just generally needs to be addressed. And that's where the adjustable pan hard bar from CNL comes into play. Now, by having the ability to essentially shorten the length of the bar itself compared to your stocker, you will be able to pull that rear axle back underneath the car, get it nice and centered, get everything within spec. And uh, basically that's gonna be the idea for, I would say 99% of the adjustable pan hard bars in the category. However, you are gonna find some slight differences, not only with material, but also the types of ends used with some of these different bars. Now, with that being said, the CNL is gonna utilize twin high performance polyurethane bushings on either end here, which I think you'll find is the most popular configuration in the category. Now, the reason being is the polyurethane bushing is still gonna be a big time improvement over your softer rubber factory bushings, but at the same time, isn't gonna be nearly as aggressive as a heim joint or a rod end bearing. Um, typically, those rod end bearings can transmit a whole bunch of noise and vibration, NVH through the car. Poly's still gonna soak that up while keeping things in place. Um, now, I typically recommend the polyurethane material for, I would say, 99% of owners out there who do wanna minimize that unwanted movement over the stocker, uh, wanna have that adjustability, but again, you don't wanna pick up all that unwanted noise vibration or harshness caused by those more aggressive options. But outside of the polyurethane bushings, guys, which are greasable, by the way, they do toss in some Zerk fittings that you'll have to install here with the bar. You're also looking at a high quality tubular steel build for the overall body. Uh, now, as you can see, that steel has been finished off in a blue powder coat. It's gonna definitely deliver a more unique look compared to black or red or gray options that you'll see in the category. And more importantly, that blue powder coat will help resist or reduce any corrosion over the years underneath your car. Now, as far as your installation is concerned here, guys, well, this one is pretty simple overall. Honestly, the two bolt install will probably be the easiest part of the job. There's no cutting, there's no modification needed. However, you will need a more formal alignment just to make sure everything is centered and everything is within spec. So definitely keep that in mind for after the install. But just to give you a basic idea of how the bar gets into place, feel free to check out our detailed walkthrough and tool breakdown now. For this install, you will need air and electric impacts, an extension, a swivel adapter, 18 and 19 millimeter sockets, 8 millimeter ratcheting wrench, 18 and 19 millimeter wrenches, an adjustable wrench, a soft dead blow mallet, a pry bar, and some lubricant. Also not shown here is a pole jack or jack and jack stands. What's up guys, today we're going to be installing a new pan hard bar on our Mustang, so let's get started. So we've got our car up in the air and we've got some pole jacks under our differential just for good practice. It's always a good idea when working in the differential area to just have some pole jacks under there supporting everything. And then what we're going to do is remove the two 18 millimeter bolts holding our pan hard bar in place. And to do that, we're going to grab our 18 mil socket and swivel adapter with an extension on our impact. Now we're gonna go ahead and run the other one loose, get these flag nuts off, then we can work our pan hard bar out. So now to avoid taking our sway bar off, we're gonna switch out to an 18 millimeter wrench to get this upper one loose. Go ahead and get that on. And go ahead and get this loosening up.
So now that we've got our bolts loose for our pan hard bar, we are gonna have to unhook and move our sway bar end links out of the way. So it's gonna be a lot easier to get your end links uh, unbolted if you take your wheels off first. So whichever wheels you're using is gonna be what you need to use to remove those. So once you have those off, we can come back into our a end links, grab our 19 mil socket on our impact, and a 19 mil wrench, and go ahead and get these unbolted. Now we can go ahead, pop this bolt out, and we'll do the same thing for the other side. We'll swing these out of the way. So now that we have these unbolted, we can go ahead and just swing our sway bar down. And we'll go ahead and pop our upper bolt out of the way. Maybe a little stubborn to come out, especially if this is your stock one that's been in for a while. We have our upper one out. We'll go ahead, pull that down. That'll relieve tension on our other side. And we can go ahead and remove this bolt. And remove our pan hard bar. So now we're ready to attach our new pan hard bar. And you'll notice on the bottom of each of our mounting points, we have threaded inserts for grease fittings, which we'll be installing. You want those to be facing towards the bottom so you can easily access them. So we'll go ahead and get this side on. Now we have the adjuster loose in order to get our upper one situated properly before we mount it. So we'll go ahead and get this in place. This may be a tight fit with these new bushings. We'll go ahead and get this in here. We may need to pull this mounting bracket out a little bit. So we're just trying to give ourselves a little extra room because the bushings on the new one are a little bit wider than the factory one. So we're gonna need to widen this mounting bracket out just a hair. And then once we tighten it back down, it will pull back to where it's supposed to be. So an easy way to do that is to grab a pretty big adjustable wrench. We'll go ahead and get on here like this. And remember, we're just trying to expand it out a little bit to give ourselves some extra room. So we'll just pull this out just slightly. A couple spots here. Then we'll go ahead and check our fit. Now we've got it started and this is an extremely tight fit for these new bushings into here. So we've gone ahead and grabbed a soft dead blow mallet. We're gonna just give it a few taps to help it into place. Get that close. And we can go ahead and start getting our other side into position. It looks like we need to come out just a hair for this. We'll go ahead, give this a turn. So we might need to lubricate and tap this side as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and use a pry bar to help our lower mounting point into position. So we get that up like so. Over the top here. Just work that in. Now what you're seeing is the lubricant we applied coming off the bushings are not being damaged for that specific reason. Now that we have that lined up, we can go ahead and get our factory mounting bolt back into place. Come up just a hair more. So 
So we've got our lower mounting bolt in. Now we can move on to our upper mounting position. So now we've gone ahead and lubricated our bushing faces for our upper mount. Go ahead and get this close. And again with our dead blow mallet here, we're gonna tap this up into position. Get close, come back here. Take our pry bar. So now after some prying and maneuvering, we've got our top mounting point in position. We'll go ahead and reinstall our factory bolt here. Now that we've got that one through, we can go ahead and reattach our flag nuts, tighten this down, then we'll install our grease fittings. Now we'll go ahead and get our flag nut back on. Get our lower one on. Now we'll go ahead and grab our 18 mil socket on our impact and tighten these down. And remember you always want to refer to your manufacturer torque spec for all of your hardware. Now we'll go ahead and install our supplied grease fittings. We'll do the same thing for the other side, then we'll come back and tighten them down. Now we'll go ahead and grab our eight millimeter wrench and tighten these down. Now remember, these are usually tapered fittings, so once they're snug, they're snug. There's no need to crank them excessively. You don't want to break the grease fitting off on your brand new pan hard bar. So now that we've got that one tight, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now we can go ahead and reattach our sway bar. So we'll swing that back up. end links line up. Get our 19 millimeter hardware back in place. We'll get our washers and our 19 millimeter nut back on. Then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side tighten both of these down. Now we'll grab our 19 mil wrench and our 19 mil socket on our impact. So now that you have this installed, once you need to make any adjustments to your pan hard bar, you can go ahead and grab an adjustable wrench and if you loosen these lock nuts up on either side, you can twist this to make it stiffer or looser depending on what you want to do in your application. And then once you have it set to your desired point, you go ahead and tighten these set nuts back down. Go ahead and lock those in on each side. and then repeat as needed to adjust your pan hard bar. Alrighty guys, that about wraps up our review and install of our CNL adjustable pan hard bar in blue finish for your 05 to 14 Mustang. Thanks for watching and as always, for everything Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.